Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, we took a tour of the oil processing facility that I spent three hard episodes toiling away on. We then set up temporary crystal oscillators in a manufacturer, just manually loading it. We advanced the milestone for trains and then tested them out by experimenting with how they work with picking up liquids or picking up raw materials. And then we went out exploring to go find some hard drives and some hostile alien life. Today, the goal is going to be now to set up turbo fuel for which we have to deliver compact coal up to our oil processing facility and then refine it by mixing it with the fuel that's already there. In the meantime, we're going to be cracking open the hard drives that we found in the previous episode and start uncovering the map with that fancy radar technology. Now, before we get into the episode proper, it's worth mentioning that I've been very busy in between the episodes. That railway testing and unlocking the railway stuff allowed me to kind of then experiment with it in my own time. And in that time, I decided to build a super long railway that leads all the way from the sulfur refinery here in the south of the map, right here, all the way up to the western oil refinery here. So we've got train stations in place now. I've decommissioned the one that we built temporarily. That was just completely temporary. Got rid of it all, repurposed the materials to build the ones that are here. And so a super long railway needed to be built to accompany it. So that's what I've gone ahead and done. Now it's technically not done. I basically started with a concrete foundation that led all the way out to where I wanted it to go and just extended the railway all the way out. Then I ran back and started trying to beautify it or make it look a little bit more natural and interesting looking. So what I ended up going with was concrete pillars on the inside, kind of laid out uh, horizontally with then structural frame foundations kind of supporting that, sort of reinforcing it. And then every 10 of those, there's like a, a big giant pillar of structural frames, both the chonky ones and then the smaller rectangular ones that go alongside it. Um, and I think it created quite a nice looking bridge, a decent looking bridge anyway. I'm quite happy with it, uh, especially at scale. And when you're looking at it from afar, it looks really, really good. But I did run out of materials. I literally ran out of steel about halfway through. So you can actually see really far off in the distance, it just ends there and just continues as concrete then from then on out. So in between episodes, I'll keep updating that and making that look a little bit better. But to get into the episode proper, we of course on the right hand side of the screen have the to-do list. I've got a lot of research I want to do in the mum. We have hard drives that we have. I've got four in my inventory. I found an extra one in between episodes out by the Caterium factory. When I was building the railway, I could see it. It was basically down here near the Caterium factory that we have. I think that's a new one, because I'm pretty sure I would have seen that before. It's right there at the base of this like little ramp that leads up into it. So I think that's a new one. Anyway, we've got four of them in the inventory, so we want to get cracking on those. I'm going to be building three radars, getting the compacted coal from here all the way up to the oil processing plant, and then expanding our tool belt. I just realized as well something that's just going to bother me if I don't get it done. Just collapse that in a bit. There we go. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the Sulphur Refinery. Now, it's been a while since we were here, so I'll just quickly give you a little overview as to where we are orientated in the world. So the Sulphur Refinery I built here on a Sulphur deposit that's just to the east and the Coal deposit that's just to the west. The two are combined to then make black powder and also to make compacted coal. So there's three assemblers making the black powder. That all just goes into these two boxes and they're basically just full. I was using that to make nobelisks. I don't know if you need that for something else later down the line, but at the moment, it's just basically all the excess is just going into an awesome sink. And the same with compacted coal. I have one box with 4,800 inside of it right now. All the excess compacted coal just going into here and then getting processed in the awesome sink. So let's get cracking. Today, I'm going to be adding an extra machine here. I was actually thinking of leveling the whole place, but I don't think I need to. We'll just get an extra machine and that way we'll be making enough. I think I need 75 compact coal and we make 25 in each one. Now previously I couldn't do that because my best belt was a belt that carried 270 coal and this place is also supplying our motor factory which is right there with all the coal it needs so we can make steel and make various things to help make the motors. But now we've got belts that can go faster so I can up the rate of this. It's already being overclocked so we can up the rate of this a little bit more just to get that extra bit of coal and I think it's a one-to-one Translation, isn't it? It's 25. Yeah, so 25 coal in, you get 25 compacted coal out. So we'll just increase that by 25, add an extra machine and hook it up. But I don't need to do it just yet. I'm going to do things one by one. So let's get started with the mom. Or the mam. I don't know why I always call it the mom. And we'll start unlocking things. So in the previous episode, I had gotten crystal oscillators up and running in a manufacturer. And we left it, and it was pretty early on in the episode. Turns out it made about 406 out of all that stuff I put in there. 
And I haven't put any more in there, and it's actually not making any more at the moment, so I might have to refill that at some stage. But here we are in the quartz chain. We scroll down, we have radio signal scanning, and then radar technology. So I'll get the radar technology first. It's 50 oscillators, 50 heavy modular frames, and 100 circuit boards. Now, I had a look. I've never used these before, but I had a look on the wiki to kind of understand what they do. Apparently, they unlock vast areas of the map and it unlocks more and more over time, and the higher you place them, the better they do. At least that's what it says on the wiki. I've heard conflicting reports, because some people have said, like, it just unlocks the map instantly, so I'm not sure, we'll see. And it basically recommends that you bring a biomass burner with you, and you can just hook it up, 200 biomass, and then you can just leave it, and it should get the job done. You can just decommission it and move it then, you don't need to keep it there. Uh, then we have radio signal scanning, so a scannable object, a hard drive. Now to build that, I actually need the equipment workshop built. And then we'll make ourselves an object scanner. Make ourselves two, I guess, because one's going to be consumed, and then I'll use the other one to find hard drives. Alright. So this allows us to scan for hard drives out in the world, and our little thing will beep and let us, let us know where they are. So if I'm in a new spot, in particular, I just realized I can actually complete this chain if I had 100 Nobelisks. Let me just check really quickly if we do. Got 37. Well, if you add some steel beams in there, we might get it done on the way back. How much is in my inventory? Just 50, 61 now. Okay. Yeah, I'll just make a little box, a personal box here. Store the excess ones that I don't want to use right now. Alright, so now that this is free, we can add in the hard drive. I've got four in total. Like I said, I found one near the Caterium uh, factory, and then I just collected the other ones that I had in storage. Awesome, so that is our first thing done on the to-do, which is MAM, radio, and radar technology done. Now let me just make sure, before I head out, that I have what I can to... Yeah, I've got enough to build one of these. Oh my god, it's a big building. Alright, so the plan for me, at least, before we get setting up the turbo fuel, is to head out east and go uncover parts of the map, as we did a little exploring at the end of the last episode, but this will just unlock everything and show us where things are. Now, I found a cool route, which is blocked by boulders, so we'll be taking that route. Yeah, just drive this way. And uh, we'll clear it, go through. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, we'll clear it, go through, and then we can start seeing, um, yeah, just kind of what's out here, all the different deposits and stuff. This makes it much more quick. Don't have to scan like six different times just to see what's around, and it's not temporary. It'll just stay there. It actually even tells you how many hard drives are in the area and things like that, but it doesn't, I think, directly tell you. Alright, let's go. And I thought the Factorio music would be perfect for this. I think the exploration... Factorio music is perfect for exploration, I think. Relaying message. Hello, this is Paternal Figure. I've taken ill and need your help to find a cure. Doctors say that the only remedy is alien artifacts. What do we have here? Caterium, is it? Yeah. All right, cool. There it is there, by the way. We don't need to get it. <laughs> don't worry about the voice. All right, let's keep going. Harvest. No! How cool is this game looking now? That skybox really makes a difference in my opinion. Now, apparently, the higher up you are, um, the better the radar does. What if do they fight each other? Don't actually have my rebar gun with me, so I can't shoot them. Or do I? Uh, I don't think so. That's why I need to get that expanded tool belt slot. Um, so, I was thinking that we could just build one maybe a bit further out in the lake at one of these taller things. Don't need to drive out there, we'll just hop up.
Yeah, so maybe just up on this thing. Oh, I can actually see... Oops. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I made it. Um, I can actually see another hard drive all the way out there. That's kind of where we ended the episode, actually. I don't know if I spotted that at the last episode. There was tons of blue slugs around here, and I actually left them. There was also tons of spiders. <laughs> so, um, I didn't... I didn't bother fighting him. Oh, there's another one down at the lake. See, my my memory... First of all, my memory is just terrible. People have pointed that out now uh, many times, but I don't remember if I got that one. I know that I definitely remember getting the one that was down here, so we could always go for that one as well. And if we were to break out the object scanner right now, actually... Out of range. It's not finding anything up here. All right, well, let's build this tower and get started. Oh my god, <laughs> that's way bigger than I thought. Holy crap. All right, cool, so we've got a power, What's the, what does it look like? Yeah, there we go, oh wow, it's a huge radius. So it's not powered, it's not gonna do anything, but I think what people have said is it just uncovers things instantly, but we'll see. So power, biomass burner, let's get one like right here. Okay, and let's just throw in some biofuel for a bit. I guess biomass. Yeah, see? It's just like instant. Maybe it grows more and more over time or something. But there we go. We can see all of the different... So I guess I don't even have to look at this. I can just look at this, right? And we can see now what's around us. So normal iron ore deposits, normal, normal, pure, impure. And then we've got all that crude oil. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six crude oil deposits. Two of which are pure. A normal, an impure, a normal, and a pure. Wow, so pretty... Pretty thick amount of crude oil out there. Much more so than we had out this way. Interestingly as well, no... There's even more coal up there. Normal there, and there's four deposits of coal down this way. No sulfur, though, or caterium or anything else. That's really good. It works pretty much just as I wanted it to, except way faster. Can I climb it, actually, as well? Oh, my God. Well, we, we got to do it just at least once to see what it looks like from up top. Oh. Oh, the ladder's over there. Oh my god, it's like I'm playing Far Cry or something. Whoop. <laughs> Sweet. It's funny, we're in a... We, it is... Even though it's up high, we are in a basin, so it's still pretty low down. Now maybe... What do you reckon? I could make the jump over there? If I had a parachute, I reckon I could glide over and get that hard drive. But because we're kind of against the clock, I'll probably leave those hard drives. We're only we're barely even going to get the four done today, I think. We can also see... What the hell is that? Just grass. Yeah, we could just see other slugs, yellow slugs and stuff all dotted around. Cool. Yeah, so next time, you know, we'll put another tower a bit further out. I don't know if I can just take this down. It says there's nine hard drives around this area. I mean, that's damn good to know. You could just... I'm, I think I will leave this here. And then I can just come back and get these things maybe in between. Where it's another time. 68 power slugs. Holy crap. And then all the different animals that are here. Um, do I have enough to make another one? I actually could just make another one as well. Which I wanted to do. Alright, cool. So that's going to be it. Let's just get back in the car. Which uh, I'm after losing now. That's the hard drive I think we got last time, is it? Let's just check. There's a lizard doggo next to it. I'm seeing a big spider down there. Oh my god. Oh fucking hell. <laughs> Come on, do that again. Oh god. Okay, it wasn't that bad. It just seems to be just the one. Oh, 15 AI limiters. I'll take it. What the hell is this? Oh, we've already opened it. Damn it. All right, cool. Let's just get out of here then. So, where is my vehicle? It's just over there. 
I have it turned off on the compass because I've turned off all vehicles on the compass because I felt my felt like my compass up top was just so cluttered. Um, so let's say I wanted to build three radars in total today. So that's the first one done. Gonna build the other one up by the old refinery. So let's see, where should we go? I guess just straight back pretty much the way we came back to the sulfur refinery and we'll get started on that other stuff. Kind of fun little adventure to see how it works as well. I don't mind it burning. Oh my god. Such skill. <laughs> I don't mind it burning the biomass, I mean. I can just come back out here with more later. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you think that it just does it instantly or if it does take time. Because it says it winds up on the wiki, but it seemed like it just did it. Now, it could be because it's already partially completed. Like, that area wasn't completely blank. So maybe it just finished it off like super quick because there was only one thing left to do. I don't know. Like one like kind of pulse. Alrighty. Let's see, do I have anything in here I can take with me? Motors. Rotors. All right, let's just make our way back upstairs. Um, I might need to increase the rate of sulfur, actually, as well, thinking about it. I don't know if I made this so that it was one-to-one -one with sulfur, or if sulfur gets backed up and goes into an awesome sink or something. Oh, it does, yeah. Okay, that's good. That means we have more than we need. All right, so let's have a look at the time left on this. Hey, look at that, 10 seconds to go. So we'll see what we get, put the next one in, and then get to work on the uh, adding our extra assembler and getting compact coal up and running. Okay, so we have heavy flexible frames. So you get 3.75 per minute in a manufacturer for heavy modular frames. This requires 104 screws, 20. To See, I can't even remember what you initially get. Then what do we have here? I'll have a look in a second though. Um, cheap silica, nah, forget that. Pure iron ingot, water and iron ore to get this. I'm guessing the heavy modular frame. Just out of curiosity though, I just wanna see what it takes in a manufacturer. Now, just so people don't write it in the comments, I know that you can check here, but I guess I'm just stupid because I don't know necessarily how many, I just want to know per minute, like, okay. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. So there we go, 10 per minute, 30 per minute, 10 per minute, 200 per minute, 200 screws per minute. And that's the default recipe. So, I hate to be a stickler for this, but just I want to just make sure I don't make a mistake. 10, 30, 10, and 200. And that's going to be modular frames, steel pipes, encased beams, and screws. I'm just writing it down so I remember right now. All right, and just make that comparison then super quick here. Click to expand. There we go. So the heavy modu so the modular frames change from 10 per minute to 18.75 per minute. So you need more modular frames. Instead of 30... Oh, it doesn't need steel pipes. It uses rubber. I see. Hmm. Well, I'll just get this one anyway, and I might play around with the idea of using that in future. But I don't know. Rubber is a bit of an awkward one to then deliver. And then 390 screws, as opposed to 200, which we currently use. Doesn't seem that good. But we'll just click it anyway. Whatever. We've got other hard drives to get through. Alright, the next one's in there. So let's just talk, tick that off as well. First hard drive done. Cool. Alright, so next up, compact coal to the refinery. So I'm going to load up this thing with compact coal. So let's get an industrial storage. Just right in front of it. Pretty much just right there. Great. So we just need to pile this up. So actually, just what I could do right now is let's get our super fast belt. Where the hell is it? There it is. Using encased industrial beams. Just gonna do an ugly uh, transfer over to this thing. Alright, 
Don't worry about that. I'm just emptying this box out, basically. I'll just cut this. Oh my god, I can't even, like, see it. It's, like, so tightly packed in there. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of the smart splitter then, I guess. Whatever. Let it back up for a moment. So that's just going to fill this up entirely. This should just get completely backed up. And then we can get our train moving with it. So in the meantime, I'm just going to add an extra one of these. So this needs to move. It seemed like a bit of a focal one. Okay. Compact coal. So that's going to require sulfur and coal. Looks like we're full up as well now. What can I get rid of? Just delete some screws and I should really refine those um, slugs, I guess, into power shards. Alright, cool. Alright, let's get rid of that. This, I did, like I said, I did think about leveling this whole place, but until, I don't know, I'm, what I'm thinking a bit grander scale is eventually this will probably just be a, sul a place to get sulfur, and then a train will pick up, like, the raw sulfur and bring it to one localized factory, because sulfur seems to be kind of rare and not in many deposits. So because of that, I think it's better to centralize it somewhere. Alright, cool. I can actually get rid of this bit as well. Okay, so the top line is where the, um, I guess the coal is going in, right? So we'll just get this to go like here, in line with everything. And that should be right. What is that? That's a Mark III belt, so I guess I'll use a Mark III. Pretty straightforward, and then another splitter here for the sulfur itself. Just check what kind of belt it's using. It's using a two. I'm guessing I did that right. <laughs> okay, so that's sulfur in, and coal should be able to come in now as well in just a sec. So the way this works is it says overflow goes out this way, but the motor factory is actually stalled because there's no awesome sink getting rid of everything. So this is just going to be sending pretty much all the coal that's been made at the moment. But just anyways, I'll increase this now to um, just to double check. It was 25, right? 25 extra, I think. 25 extra is all it needs. So, just a classic 122.9167%, love to see those numbers, uh, but that's going to require us now to upgrade the belts, so, there we go. Don't think it needs to have it this way, but just in case. Alright, and that's still feeding into all the other... I mean, we don't need the black powder, it's fine. It's really just these ones that are most important. Um, okay, so let's get this. Hook that up. So what else doesn't have power? I think everything's fine, but just connect it that way, just in case. Alright, so super messy. Not like, you know, a nice factory like my other one. My fuel facility. But I can't be putting the same amount of time into everything just yet. Once I know something a bit more definitive and finalized, then we can. But uh, this is a for now job. So let's just get rid of this, this, and this, and this, and this. So we just need to merge all of these three and send them into this new box, right? That's ultimately where they're going to have to go. And maybe I'll just make a double box, because this is about to be full anyway. It's so cool watching how fast it goes down. <laughs> Alright, nice. This is empty. See you later. 
So yeah, maybe I'll just make a second one just right in front. Just a huge buffer of extra stuff. And then any compact coal can just go right in there. All right. All right, full. Good. Okay, so um, we just need mergers. This hotbar is a mess. I'll use this one. They all need to merge onto the same line. And there's only three of them anyway. Well, actually, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I know it's not lined up, but give me a break. <laughs> Alright, just get rid of these little bits and pieces. Okay, that's compact coal. Like I said, we only need 75, and that's 75, so we should be good. Obviously, there's some travel time in there, but it should all work out just fine, especially with all the big excess storage we have. Oh yeah, I can get those extra novelisks. Let's just do that and we can finish off the quartz chain completely. I think that's basically enough. Just wait to get, um, it does it pretty quick, just five more. I guess I'll just come back in a second. So 20, yeah, that's totally fine. Good. All right, how much time do we have left on this one? A minute 23. Um, well, in the meantime, let's put our train down. All right, electric mo locomotive. So it's gonna be going out that way. Let's put it like this. And then freight car. I only need the one freight car for now. But, I mean, like I said, in future, I'm sure things will change. But this is just our very first starter sort of train route. Um, it's doing sulfur. Let's color it black. Cool. Black and gold. And we should have it all powered on already. I think it's all good. So what we're going to have to do is edit the timetable. Start at the sulfur refinery. Then go to the oil processing facility, which is spelled incorrect. I'll have to rename that. So while we're here, load only, um, compact coal. I mean, that's all that's here anyway, but just, I don't know, it's good to have it correct. One load unload has been completed, or wait for 15 seconds. I would say wait for 60 seconds, seeing as everything is done per minute anyway. And then we'll unload compacted coal. Okay. So that's where we're going. It'd be cool if it showed the line. It shows the line with the uh, trucks. So let's save the changes on that. I'm not going to turn on self-driving just yet. We'll leave it for a minute. And then we'll ride the rail with it and go the whole way, which should be fun. Okay, let's see what we got. Three new recipes. So a crystal beacon, which I imagine is possibly going to get removed out of the game because they said that they might not have a use for beacons anymore. We then have an iron alloy ingot. An iron alloy ingot. So five iron, 50 per minute in a foundry by mixing iron and copper. Or we could go compacted steel. So we use compact coal, oh, and iron, whoops, compacted coal and iron in a foundry for 37 and a half per minute. I'll go with this one. I don't know if we'll use it, but good to have. Let's just go with that one. Now before I do the next one, let's just see, do I have this? Yeah, I'm five short. Let's just pick these up. Pulse Nobelisk. Not that I really want a Pulse Nobelisk specifically, I just wanted to complete the tree. 
So we've now completed the quartz tree in totality. All right, we can get rid of that box. Uh, we'll put in the next hard drive. Let me just grab some extra novelists just in case I come across something that needs them. Boom. All right, good. Everything's going pretty great. Um, so we'll just toggle off that we did another one of those. Another hard drive has been done. Compact coal to the refinery should be basically ready to go, but we'll have to do that, obviously. Expand the tool belt. Oh, yeah, that's for fabric. We need to get some fabric. Let me just sort my inventory real quick. All good. Got some space. Nice. All right, let's go. Let's make this journey. So we'll tell it to automate and see how it works. Uh, so turn on self-driving. Next station, sulfur refinery. So it's just going to slowly roll up to here, and then I guess this box should just immediately load a full container worth of compacted coal. Hmm. It's not doing it. Hang on. Turn off self-driving just for a second. It might not be on loading. That could be why. Isn't there a way to select that? I thought there was. Oh, I haven't hooked it up. <laughs> okay, that could be uh, that could be a problem. I thought you have to click these and select load or unload. I have to do it on the other one. I thought. I'm not seeing a way to highlight it or interact with it. So just real quickly, I'll get in the train and just back up a minute. Just let me back up. I'm not allowed to drive it at all now. How do I stop docking? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't do anything. I'm pressing like S and W. It's not going forward or back. Brake doesn't do anything. Turn on self-driving. Turn off self-driving. Let's just do that and then I can back up now. There we go. I will just start this again. <laughs> it's so dodgy driving out there. Okay, so let's edit the timetable. Next station, sulfur refinery. Okay, turn on self-driving. I'm happy to just to start now. There should already be enough to take up with us. I will just leave this running anyway in the background. It'll just keep piling everything up for us. Okay. All right, sweet. There we go. Docking procedures have begun. Nice. And we can follow this journey all the way up, take this compact coal up to the refinery, and then start building the turbo belt, or sorry, turbo fuel room. Smooth. So I've noticed, actually, hmm, I never actually checked. Just thinking about it now. I've got a, an industrial storage container feeding into that. I wonder, can it even hold the same amount? I'm not too sure. And this is told to wait 60 seconds, right? I think that's what it's waiting for. Maybe 60 is a bit too long. I mean, normally, yeah, I don't know. I guess so. One full load, I suppose, would be the right thing to do. There we go. Good. Okay, it took a little longer than I hoped, but it's all good. So just while we're going, um, I'll do that for the next place too. All right. Now the nice thing about this railway is, you know, it passes right by the motor factory. It passes by steel. You can, and all, you know, almost the caterium as well. You can have like little things that little stations all the way. Screws. You can add a double line as well, I'm, I'm sure, eventually. And then once we get up here, I'm going to build another radar tower, uncover what's kind of north of us, see what's around us. We've already gotten that hard drive, and we've gotten that one out there as well. So it's all good. 
So yeah, that's where I ran out of materials, basically. Uh, right there. <laughs> so this is just like a floating concrete foundation that leads the whole way out. And, you know, maybe brushing aside the tree branches, no problem for this train, obviously. And the platform's totally just standing free fall as well. But like I said, ran out of materials. Now I noticed actually here before, when I was building this, there was a hard drive somewhere around here. Oh, it's over there. I might go and get that one actually real quickly. See if this unloads. I don't remember if I set this thing to unload or not actually, so we'll see. It's got nowhere to go though. It's not hooked up to anything. All right, there we go. I have to rename this place because it, I guess, it's too long of a name. Yeah, so it's actually not unloading because I think that's because you have to tell it to do it specifically. I don't know where you do that though. Configure train station. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm so sure I saw it before where you see like a little load and unload thing. I don't know what I'm clicking wrong. Configure freight. Yeah, unload. Why can't I do that for the other one? This is freight platform. This is a freight platform. I think because the train is literally there right now. Maybe that's why. That could be why. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's going to make another loop and come back around with a, a bigger load anyway. Um, but we're here. So that's the important thing. So compact coal to the refinery. We can basically say we've done that. The trip works. Watch it kind of leave and then come back in a little while. So while we're here, um, fuel is made in the room downstairs. So we have 120 fuel being made, which means we can sustain five refineries that make turbo fuel. So that's what we're going to do. So I guess I'll just grab this real quick. We'll just extend this out right now. I think this room would be big enough to handle it. I haven't actually mapped any of this stuff out, so we're going to be just guessing. I put so much work into this place, though, I don't want to just undermine it. I'll try to build where it looks decent, makes sense. So let's just continue that. And then somehow we'll connect the upstairs as a train station, somehow. that train leaving? Not too sure. Um, anyways, so let's just get rid of these and get rid of these and we can just pop them here instead. That's all that really matters. We'll just put another couple windows here as well. Okay, so let's just get rid of this um, this part of the room. I don't know, should I keep it as a separate room? This is where fuel comes in. And this is so this is the fuel line that we have to kind of interrupt. Yeah. So if you remember, fuel goes from here into the generator room. So I'll be breaking the generators here. We're breaking the connection. I won't do that just yet. Right, so ultimately we want to feed back out the, uh, what's it called, the turbo fuel out there. So turbo fuel is going to go that way. And regular fuel, instead of going in there and coming in here, it's just going to come this way and get refined. So let's just go with um, refiners, refinery. So I'm just thinking where the coal is even going to come down. The coal has got to come down into this room somewhere. Now, ideally, the fuel refineries will face out this way. That would just be nicer. But it means the coal will have to wrap around the back. I'm okay with that, though. So let's maybe go... I'll just temporarily test this out, sort of, like, in the middle here. One. Two. That's just a bit short. So we can fit five. We just won't have room for anything else. But I can always extend the room, I guess. 
All right, we'll just slam it right next to the wall then. I think I will break this connection then, if that's the case. Just means the lights and things are gonna have to change. But we'll let them just float there for now. I can clean that up in between. The mom is completed, so let's just check it really quickly. So what do we got this time? Alternate steel coated plates. So mixing steel with plastic gives us 18 iron plates. We have the cheap silica again, and we have bolted iron plates, screws and iron plates. Again, I don't feel like any of this is good. I don't know. At first glance, I just don't think any of it's really worth it. Um, how's reinforced iron plates made normally? Thirty per minute and sixty per minute. Ninety per minute, two hundred and fifty per minute. It's the same materials, but we get fifteen per minute out. So I'm sure it's more efficient, right? We only get five per minute out. So for three times the rate, how much extra stuff do we take in? Well, we take in more than three times the amount of screws. I don't know why I'm such an idiot. I just forget immediately what it just says. Uh, 30 per minute and 60 per minute. And we get five out. And this gives us 15 out. So it's four times the amount of screws and three times the amount of iron. Yeah, I don't really think it's worth it, sorry. Um, I don't really think any of it's worth it. I guess I'll just go with this one. It's either that or that for me. But I don't. I can't see myself using either. All right, just put another hard drive in there. We can get rid of that, right? Yeah. Okay, last hard drive's on the go. Um, okay. So, refineries. So like I said, this connection is going to be broken. We can get rid of this because we can package up turbo fuel. We don't need to package this up. Cool. So it's fuel. Fuel is just going straight out there. We're not packaging anymore. Uh, there's a little bit left in the buffer though, so it should be fine. Speaking of, it'd probably be good to have a buffer in here actually thinking about it. Yeah, okay, actually, I'll keep it facing this way, thinking about it. It would make more sense. We'll have to wrap around the turbo fuel, but no big deal. So let's just go. I don't know what it's intersecting with the roof, I guess. Alright, one, two, three, four, and five. It's going to take in regular fuel and compacted coal. Compact coal. So we'll build splitters that face in. Just going to make sure that that's, that is enough distance. Yeah, that should be fine. All right, so you just got to do that in a line. One, two, and three. It's facing the right way. All right, nice. So basically, this is going to be the compact coal. Um, let's use a tier three belt. Feed it along quickly. One, two, three, four, and then this last one. Okay, so that's compact coal that can come in here. We just need to feed this end of it, you know? Um, not sure how I'm going to do that, but uh, I mean, worse, I mean, temporarily, I guess. I can adjust this maybe in between episodes or something if I think about a better layout. But we could just literally feed a big thing up here and bring it down and in. And then maybe I can readjust where things go, because I just don't know the layout of where this train station is going to fit into this building just yet. But I would like to just get this thing fed. 
um, somehow. So we can do that from upstairs. Might have to build a ladder to get up as well now. Again, I <laughs> might need a little ladder here. I built this platform, I don't think I ever hopped down. Has this train made it back yet? It has left the station, which is good. Uh, and it is there. Is it okay? It says operational, so it seems fine. So I guess I'll just ex I didn't really want to extend this platform out. Yeah, so it's going to be coming out of here, right? This is where it's going to come out. Configure, unload. I think that was the problem. It didn't unload the train. It seems like, yeah, I guess you can only interact with it when a, s a train isn't there. That, that makes sense, I guess. All right, just to avoid little issues. So yeah, we'll just make a dirty, ugly looking belt. It's going to be a kind of a temporary thing, but let's go like this. Drag this right out to here. And then just put one of these elevators on it, hop down. This is all temporary. Once I figure out a nice like architectural layout, then I can just reorganize it. But the logistics will be the thing that stays the same, right? So how things move and the rates of the machines are not going to change. It's just the where they get to how they get there is going to change a little bit. All right, so that's compact coal. Should, we should start seeing that come in. Um, maybe a good idea, actually, Darren, would be to just put it in a quick little box, just so there's something. I, I guess, actually, the station does that. Although, yeah, when I move the station, I might need it then afterwards. Don't want, you know, interrupting turbo fuel. So let's just do this. Just because when I eventually decide, like, if I decide to move the station or something, I'd like to have a little bit of a buffer, even if it's just a small one. Cool. All right, great. So that's going to hold compact coal for us for a bit. And then we need to field, uh, f um, field in the fuel. So this should be pretty straightforward, I think. A lot of people gave me tips about the fuel situation that I use too many valves and stuff. It's funny because in all my testing, I didn't use any valves. And I thought, like, I was still getting some issues. So I was like, okay, I'll just put valves on everything, you know? I actually had, like, almost no valves the first kind of test I ever did for it. And the reason I went with valves is because, like, I've just watched videos that said, like, yeah, like, valves will control the flow rate. It'll stop the sloshing back and forth. Um, but granted, I didn't really see anyone say you should put limits on them. It does seem like the prevailing wisdom is you want to have just a little bit more than you need. That seems to be the thought. And uh, there was actually a really great comment, really insightful, and it was a, a nice long paragraph. Sorry that I forgot the name. I never remember the names of people who write them. Uh, during the episodes, I should really write them down. But I do read my comments, and the person said that, you know, if you just think of liquid like as in you're just filling up like a jug or something, like eventually it will just fill up if you're producing the correct amount, and all the pipes will fill up. You know, everything will just get filled the long and short of it is just that you don't need to be putting valves on things like everything will fill it'll be fine it might take a while but just like a manifold belt things will just fill up as long as you're producing more than is needed even just by like one meters cubed uh, of liquid so once I kind of started thinking about it that way it does make a lot of sense I'll probably remove a lot of the valves I have that being said the place is running pretty much fine but there's a little sputtering and I think that's because I am limiting things directly to the limits like what should go into the machines whereas it does seem like they don't need that so we can just have a look really quickly we're consuming 22.5 meter um meters cubed of fuel 22.5 per minute and there's five of these machines so 22.5 times five that's gonna be 112.5 so that's how much fuel is required now we're actually producing 120 so we have a little bit left over so this is actually going to work nicely this means that i'm going to be producing an excess 
and our pipe should be working a little bit better because of that. So I could then send into here, um, we could send in what they call turbo fuel now coming out. And we can also send turbo fuel and wrap it around this side. Yeah, this actually works out just fine. And then send it into here. So I'm going to cut this now. And then try to flush the network or something because I don't think it lets you merge the pipes this way. So fuel comes out of there and it'll need to go into here. So that's where our fuel is going to go now, 120. Let's just color it the same so we remember what it is at a glance. Crimson. You think actually crimson should really be used for the turbo fuel, thinking about it, but it is what it is now. So that's just going to be regular fuel. And just to give it the accent color. Alright, we can hear it loading in. I haven't hooked these up to power just yet, so... Hey, coal is here! Just like that, it's filtering down. So the loading and the loading is working with the train. Perfect. Alright, well let's hook these up to power then. Probably put it on the roof eventually. All the kind of busy work with making the place look a little bit nicer, I can do it on my own. Okay, that's all hooked up. So, yeah, we'll just hook this up to the ceiling. And that'll give them their power. So now they have their fuel flooding in there. Compacted coal is filtering on in. That's going to be turbo fuel coming out. So, um. Hmm. Just trying to think, I want some of it to go that way. <laughs> Let's just make a small fluid buffer here, just for the fun of it. And our mom has gotten done as well. We'll check that a bit later. So, one, two. But yeah, oh yeah, the other thing was a lot of people were saying make diluted fuel. Of course, I'm looking through hard drives so we can see get that recipe as fast as possible but I mean like it seems like turbo fuel is just right in front of us so why not just do it you know it seems relatively simple enough to just get a train to deliver coal here but if we have to change it again so be it <laughs> but I'd rather not <laughs> if I could avoid it although I think some people I haven't looked that's the thing but some people were saying that um, turbo fuel is more efficient anyway so we'll see so there we go turbo fuel starting to pile up so that, how much are we producing? 18.75 for each machine. 18.75 times 5 is going to be 93.75. So it's less than the 120 coming in, but it should last much longer, I think, in the uh, generators. So I'm not really sure how this is going to work. We have to tell these generators to sort of cut off now. Configure the valve. So let me just click this. Full pipe network. Just flush it. Just empty it all out. out of my face but yeah this is a problem that I thought oh well basically people told me I would have this problem which is if you're switching fuel there's gonna be some fuel left in the machines now I don't know how to get rid of it other than just well I don't know take the valves off maybe and it might slosh back out would that happen no I wouldn't have thought so so there's nothing in these pipes. These are all empty now. So that's good. But yeah, unfortunately the machines just have a little bit of residue left in them. So I think what I have to do is like delete them and rebuild them. Uh, which is a little bit tedious, but at least we have everything in place. We can just line things up now. There we go. Right there, I guess. I'll have to reconnect the pipes. That's what the batteries are for. Hopefully the batteries are kicking in if we have um, fuel power problems. Good. Sorry, it's just super finicky when you're up close like this and there's all these different lines that are trying to make it snap to the other room. Oh my god. 
I can't even see like what I'm trying to look for. There it is. So it's here. Okay, cool. Okay, let's just maybe turn these ones on first, if we can. So I'll get rid of these valves, like you said, they're probably not needed. Alright, let's hook these back up. So I'll start down at the end. Alright, cool. I'll color the pipes a bit in, a, in just a moment. Now, these have to be repowered back on, but I left the power right at the back, so it should be pretty quick. No messy cables. And there we go. So that's four done. We have four more to go, but just power these on. Make sure everything's working, and then I'll do the other four. Uh, yeah, interestingly, we're actually still running just fine without even needing these on just yet. I think that's because a few of our other factories are just backed up right now. Okay, so this is like refinement room number two, turbo fuel room. And then we'll go into the packager and start packaging turbo fuel and distribute it to the vehicles. Yeah, look at that. All right, we're almost full, 300. Uh, I might make just a couple of these. I like me my fluid buffers. So ultimately, we just have to connect it out to there. So I'll just bring this in this way. This makes it a little bit easier and neater for us to use. It actually isn't aligned with the center. That's not a big deal or anything, but it's just good to know. Alrighty, so there we go. Right, so it's sort of draining out now. Once it gets kind of backed up, then I can split it off to get packaged fuel as well. So what was the amount that we were making? 93.75. So that's the only thing I need to check on is how much are we actually consuming in here? Or will we be consuming? It's limited to 100, but that's fine. Hey, he's back. Stop it. Stop trying to morph into this factory, please. Just go the other way. <laughs> Any other way. All right, we're getting fuel. So, here we go. 4.5 per minute is consumed in each one of these, whereas this was consuming 12. Wow, a lot more. So we're less than half. So it is just filling up straight away. Nice. Good stuff. This one's not up yet. Oh, this hasn't been hooked up to power, has it not? Oh, no, it has. Cool. Excellent. So 4.5 times... Uh, 8? 30... Oh my god. Yeah, so it's worth it. This is actually pretty great. You know, we're not using... It's not consuming that much overall. We're only using 36 of the fuel that we're making. To power all of this. So we can definitely extend this room or build a second generator room. Nice. So this is totally worth it. Totally worth it. I was worried that the refinement wouldn't really make any sense. Um, so what I'm going to do is just, let's say, flush the pipe network now. We'll swap this to be turbo fuel, packaged turbo fuel. So it's just going to require turbo fuel coming in instead. That's the only difference. Alrighty, turbo fuel. I don't know what color I should color it. Maybe just straight yellow? I mean, that would really be confusing, wouldn't it? I guess I'll probably update things so that the regular fuel line is yellow, and then this one will be the red and yellow, because that totally makes more sense, obviously. Um, 
So yeah, I'll just do that. I'll do I'll do it at some other point in between. What I'll probably do is have the yellow pipe with red trim for regular fuel, and then invert it for the turbo fuel. And then we can see the um, compact coal coming in nicely. Already maxed out. Obviously, it's going to max it out early on, but then it might change things a bit later, depending on the rates at which we're making the coal. We should be making enough, but it's delivering so much now because we had so much excess in storage already. So this is just now slowly filling up. So cool. So that is the um, turbo fuel room done. We also have our fourth hard drive. So let's check it out. Nice, so we have fused quick... Oh, let's go from left to right. So, Caterium circuit board, plastic and quick wire, making a circuit board, 8.75 per minute. So that's going to be 12.5 per minute plastic. 12.5 plastic. I'm just writing it down. 37.5 quick wire. And it makes 8.75 circuits. All right, so I just want to check it against the regular thing. Oh, yeah, so we use copper sheeting and plastic. So this is making... So instead of... Yeah, so the other recipe will give us a little bit more circuits per minute, right? 8.75 as opposed to 7.5. But then plastic-wise, it uses half, less than half. Instead of 30 per minute, it only uses 12.5. But of course, it's using 37.5 caterium. I actually like the sound of that because... There is a Caterium deposit, a pure node, somewhere around here. And we obviously have crude oil and stuff up here. So I like the idea of maybe fusing the two and making a circuit factory using that alternate recipe. That sounds like a pretty good one to me. It's quick. You make, you make so much quick wire. And you can actually change how we make quick wire if you wanted to. See, I think I'll go with that one. I'm happy with the, how we make quick wire currently. Let me just double check it just really quickly. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All right, yeah, let's go with this. I think we'll make. The, I think we'll actually use that in the next circuit board factory. So um, I needed to go get fabric to expand our tool belt, and then I'm going to build one last radar, and that'll be it for this episode. So yeah, there's all this fabric in here. Just grab a hundred. Alien organisms, is it? Not sure where I saw it. Oh, mycelia. That's it. A hundred rotors and fifty fabric, an extra hand equipment slot. Boom. Every little helps. But it does let me. It does let me keep the object scanner in my hand rather than keep it out here. So there we go. No hard drives around us. All right. So just to double check, can we build a biomass burner? Yep, I've got biomass with me, and we already checked if we could build another radar. Let's just check after building all those refineries. Yes, indeed. All right, so let's just run north. I don't have my um, car with me, actually. Oh, we can see the train moving back. Cool. So we'll just run north. Go into just somewhere over here, and then um, activate it. Don't know if I can get up high, actually. It'd be nice if we could. Might be able to just run up somewhere there and then hop up to that area. I think actually there is a hard drive up there. I've listed a, a stamp from a long time ago, one that I caught in the distance. This is a fun episode. Doing a bit of, I like having a little bit of, um, what's it called? Like a little mixing exploration and building. Obviously it's a kind of a quick, quick build. Didn't really get to make anything that looks like amazing or anything, but um, Still got the job done. Improved fuel efficiency and power efficiency. And I'll hook up the other fuel generators in between episodes to save you the time on that. Um, and make the place just like a little bit nicer. So let's go with um, the ladder. We'll just climb this ladder all the way up here. Alright, that should be good enough to get me to the top. All right, cool. Made it. Oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, he's not even trying to fight me. Off you go. Alright, well while we're here, let's just get that um, slug. We can build another little ladder, just get it really quickly. We've only got 17 filters left for the gas mask. Is there an easier way up that, that way? Alright, made it. Hmm, I'm not really too sure if I can get up any higher than this. Maybe, like, easily. So maybe I'll just build it here. It is, like, on the edge of the map, though, where it really doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense putting a radar. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll just run a little bit further into the desert. And uh, I'll just build one somewhere over there. The hell is this? It's like a white box. Oh, it has a thing in it. That's weird, it's like a piece of marble. I don't want to pick it up, we'll leave it. <laughs> I strongly advise you to harvest this specimen. Alright, I'll just use this spot. This seems good enough. Don't like the look of that cave. Seems safe. No one's hitting, hitting me from here. Let's just go a little bit further. <laughs> a little bit further. Alright, here we go. So, radar. Yeah, see, it just did it like instantly. Hmm, I don't know. At least, it's, at least it lets us look at so much stuff. So there's eight hard drives out this way. We have a bunch of limestone. So if we have a bit of a closer zoom in. Uh, we got a bunch of limestone, a bunch of iron ore, it looks like. Some copper, two copper ores actually next to each other. Both normal purity. Caterium in the distance, pure caterium. Thought I heard something. I guess it's just the uh, biomass burner. All right, well, I guess that's basically it. Um, so I only built two of the radars, but you know, good enough. We can toggle that one off. Whoops. Three radars, and we got our fourth hard drive. All good. So yeah, I mean, I'll probably look around, grab some extra hard drives in this area now that the radars are up in those two different areas that we just built them in. Grab hard drives where I can find them. And um, then we'll just, in the next episode, like this one, just start, you know, churning them out as the episode goes, so you guys can see them too. And then, yeah, I'm not really too sure what I'm going to focus on specifically next, but ultimately now, with that extra energy, I guess I'll be focusing building on this place a little bit more in the time being. But then it's going to be like, okay, how, how do we get, like, adaptive control units? Maybe the circuit board factory actually would be good, because like I said, Caterium is somewhere down around there. So that'll probably be a good thing, that'll probably be the good thing next to build. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode. I had a blast. Turbo fuel was fun to make and get the trains up and running and bring everything. Everything went pretty seamlessly. Quite happy with that. That's gonna be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.